Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I had a hard time naming this video only because I feel like if you name this a wrong name or if you called it a certain look, um, you're gonna get attacked <laughs> really fast because um, everybody kind of has a different opinion about what this look could be. No makeup makeup could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So in order to kind of keep this true to the name and not be misleading with what I'm trying to describe this look as, I'm gonna call it a natural glam makeup look. And I say natural in quotation marks because there is nothing about this that is natural whatsoever. I call this the natural makeup look because you can kind of get away with saying that it doesn't require a lot of color, um, the eyes are very simple, and really it's more of like a skin focused makeup look. But it's still very glamorous because we accentuated points in the face that make you look a little bit more over the top than obviously what you would look like with a minimalistic makeup look or a no makeup makeup look. So I hope that makes sense and I hope this doesn't sound too crazy. But again, I just didn't want to be misleading with this title or have you guys say that, you know, why are you calling this minimal? Why are you saying this is no makeup makeup? Because in reality, it really isn't. So ladies, when you go and tell a makeup artist that you want a natural look, please be very, very specific and by all means, bring a picture because Meaning a natural makeup look to some people could mean don't put a lot of product on me I just wanted to have very little just accentuate what you can which is more of a no makeup makeup Or you're gonna bring a picture that has a girl with flawless skin contoured I mean eyebrows up the wazoo Either way, I hope you all understand the point I'm trying to get across So if you like <laughs> what's happening on my face right now, then just please keep on watching <laughs> So I started this look by putting a thin layer of Josie Marin Argon Infinity Oil all over my face and I'm going to use this underneath my primer. After letting that face oil set in for about 15 minutes, I'm going with my Hourglass Mineral Vel Primer. So the reason why I put on that face oil before, face oil before, is because I've tried this out for a few days already and due to the to the dry weather we've been having, I really like the luminous glow it gives me. And surprisingly enough, it doesn't make me look super oily. So I figured that the combination of layering over a primer over it really helps control the oil, but still keeps your skin really, really soft and really moisturized. And again, you really want your skin to be at its best for a look like this. For foundation, I'm going to be using my tried and true Bobbi Brown Longwear Even Finish Foundation in the shade Warm Sand. My face is very much lighter than the rest of my body due to the fact that I do wear makeup so it never really gets exposed to the sun. Therefore, I am a lot more pale in my face than I am, but that's fine because this foundation does match the color of my neck, which is what you want to make sure to do in order to have the most natural finish and look. Some women don't like this, some women love it, some women want to go even darker. Really, it's up to you, but my recommendation is to always match your foundation to your neck. So I'm just going to be first applying this in dots over my face, then just using any kabuki brush. Really, I was going to use my full coverage face brush, but I had washed my brushes the night before, and it was still a little bit damp. So uh, yeah, not good to use a damp brush for this. But after spreading this all around my face evenly, not spreading, I should really say buffing, you're going to want to make sure that you stipple right afterwards. So the reason why you stipple is because it's going to help make your makeup last longer because you're actually pushing the product into your skin rather than it just sliding around all of your face, which is probably going to make it more likely to come off later throughout the day. This is going to make sure that your foundation lasts. Then we're going to do slight correcting, and we're going to have to be really careful with this. I'm using my Bobbi Brown Light Bits Corrector. Now, usually you guys see me take this all the way to my bottom lash line. For this look, we are not going to be do that. We are actually leaving it just a little bit below. So we're not going to be covering up that redness I have right underneath, but more so the redness I have right on the inner corner next to the side of my nostrils. Here you can see the difference and my eyes don't look as small. Really what we're going to be doing is using our natural eyelid discoloration to kind of act as our eyeshadow. I know it sounds weird but trust me it gets better. 
Then taking my NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer in the shade Vanilla, we are going to be doing some highlighting. Since this look isn't going to require color, we are going to be doing some heavy highlighting and contouring. I'm going to be highlighting with cream product only because I really like the way cream product highlights, but I'm going to be using powder for the contouring part. So you're going to want to make sure you put this all on the high points of your face, and really that's going to be just in the center focus. So of course, alongside your nose, up towards the high points of your cheek, down your cupid's bow, forehead um, and center of your chin and also I like to put a little bit of extra right next to my nostrils because that's where I tend to get the most red and then taking a damp beauty blender I'm gonna be using this to make sure everything is buffed out again making sure to not exceed past the point where we have put the corrector underneath our eye you don't want to take this concealer up all the way to the lash line or the bottom lash line because that's going to defeat the whole purpose you're going to want to leave that discolored and really using this damp beauty blender really helps sheer out the product. So if you feel like you're being too heavy handed with concealer, which I know I am heavy handed with concealer, but only because I like it that way, but really the damp beauty blender picks up any excess product and it really makes sure it just pushes it into your foundation so you don't see any harsh lines or any obvious lines that you had put a concealer there for the highlighting purpose. To really make sure our skin looks flawless, I'm going to be covering up any blemishes with my Bobbi Brown Touch Up Stick in the corresponding shade as my foundation. I'm just going to be lightly going over in small X's over any blemishes or scars and then using that same beauty blender to make sure I buff out any product so we don't have heavy glops of product on our face. To make sure everything is set in place, I'm going to be using my Bobbi Brown Pale Yellow Sheer Press Powder. This doesn't offer any more coverage, it simply is just to make sure everything is set and doesn't start to slide off later on. I'm going to be just making sure to put this and press it onto the areas where we have highlighted and put that creamy concealer. Since I do get oily in the T-zone, you want to make sure to focus on that center part. Then for my brows, I'm going to brush them quickly and I'm going to be putting powder on them but that's a tutorial for a later date, so we won't go through this right now. But moving on to contouring, I'm gonna be using my Bobbi Brown Bronzer in Golden Light, and as always, I'm gonna be making sure to really focus this onto the hollows of my cheek. When I am contouring, this is the main focus point that I like to pay attention to, and then from there, I like to go up and warm up the rest of my face, and I like to really make sure I hit my hairline, and then also to hit my jawline as well. I don't really like to go in really harsh back and forth motions. I kind of just like to take this angled um, brush, and I li really like to go in circular motions because I feel like that's gonna buff out the product even better. And then I'm gonna do a little trick to show you how I clean it up a bit so it doesn't look muddy. Also, I make sure to contour my nose, especially for a look like this, the contouring, highlighting, and like I said before, the base is really important. So not only am I contouring the natural dips in my nostrils, but I'm also going to be putting that really meeting my, the, the beginning of my eyebrow and focusing on that inner corner as you can see here and then making sure to drag that all the way along to the tip of my nose. This is not only going to give you a slimmer appearance but it's going to make your nose look more defined. For blush, I'm using Bobbi Brown's Pale Pink. I know this seems very bright, very neon, but trust me, these are the best blushes to use if you want to achieve that naturally flushed look. So I'm really going to be focusing this color onto the apples of our cheeks because you want to make it seem like someone had just pinched you or maybe you just ran up a flight of stairs. But also make sure to really work that blush into your contour. You don't want to see a separation from your contour to your blush and really push it up towards your hairline. Now here for a little trick, take a powder puff because they pack on the most product and take some of that sheer pressed powder we used to set our concealer. Now what you're going to want to do, and this is a little trick I learned from Nicole um, Guerrero's channel, and you're going to want to make sure, and it actually works, I was really surprised, but pack on the powder to clean up your contour. So really follow from the edge of um, the hollow of your cheek, kind of pointing down up towards your, where you're like the top of your ear starts, and just really start packing that all the way down to the corner to where your contour ends. This is not only going to sharpen your contour, but it's also going to really help set and accentuate the concealer and the foundation we have put on before too. Also putting some underneath your eyes and kind of going back up towards the high point of your cheek. And you're going to want to let that bake for a little bit. So while that was setting, I decided to just go in and put a little bit of brow gel on my eyebrows because I didn't do that. And really it's just a few seconds, maybe 30 seconds you need. And then again, taking that sheer powder brush, you're just going to really buff it away. And I was really shocked to see that it worked. Nicole is an absolute genius. And this is just going to show that you don't have to necessarily be a makeup artist or 
whatever to like get some awesome tips because sometimes just playing around with your makeup at home you can really find some great techniques to use and this one is is something that I'm like wow really blown away by and it works beautifully so you just want to really make sure you go over those edges a couple of times and really make sure you have all of the powder off of your face you don't want it to really seem like you have too much on because then you're just gonna look cakey but you know that's the whole point at first but you don't want it to stay that way and then really make sure to sweep that over um, on the high points of your cheeks to make sure all the harsh lines of your contour and your blush are no longer there you really want to make sure everything is nice and well blended seamless and again very natural looking and yes again natural in quotation marks because none of this is natural but just really make sure to go over all those edges then for the eyeshadow and really we're not using eyeshadow we're just going to be grabbing that bronzer we used to contour and a fluffy brush and just really buffing this into the crease of our eye i'm really focusing this bronzer into the inner corners of my eye which is a little bit different than what I usually do but this is going to help open up the eye and actually define it more this is the reason why we're able to pull off no eyeliner for this look because I'm also going to be dragging this on the bottom lash line and just really darkening my eyelids around and this is going to help make my eyes appear larger than what, what they are without liner going in with a light coat of mascara I'm going to be applying falsies these are Ardell's 120 Demi then taking a matte dark 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 brown shade I'm gonna be tight lining my lower lash line now I'm not gonna be putting any of this into my waterline I'm simply just gonna be pushing this onto my bottom lash line as close to my lashes as possible this is gonna make sure our bottom lashes look fuller so they match our false lashes that we put on the top since they are gonna be heavier since we do have those falsies but again this we're not gonna use eyeliner on the waterline or anything just gonna be pushing that color into the lash line then for a light highlight, I'm going with Too Faced Candlelight Glow. I really wanted to use this highlight as opposed to any of my other ones because it is more finely milled, I should say, and it actually gives a more subtle glow than any of my other highlights. It can be a little too intense, and you don't want that since we don't have so much color going on. It can kind of make you look washed out, or it's going to be the main focus, and that's not what we really, really are focusing on. But just putting this on all the normal points, Cupid's bow, center of my chin, high points of my cheek, forehead, and nose. Then for the lips, this is going to be where we do a little bit of construction work. <laughs> I'm going to be first lining my lips with NYX Mauve Lip Liner. I am overdrawing slightly. It's just what I do. If you like it, great. If you don't, great. Doesn't really matter. But then I'm be filling in the rest of my lips with this as well. This is going to make sure the colors we put on top are going to last a lot longer. And by the way, can I just say I really hate looking at myself filling my lips. This is so weird and awkward looking. <laughs> then going in with the NYX Soft Matte Cream Lip Color. This is in the shade Abu Dhabi. And this is just a pale nude. Not too, too pale though. It has a little bit of brown and mauve in it. So it matches lip liner perfectly. And just filling my in filling my lips in with that. Once that has dried, I'm going to be placing NYX Spirit Matte Lipstick, which is my favorite, favorite nude of all time. And I'm actually just going to be dabbing that right into the center of my lips. So it's going to make our lips appear a lot fuller. And it's going to, again, give us a little bit more of an amplified look. Then to really just glam it up, I'm going to be topping it off with Bites Beauty Gloss in Rambutan. This is a really nice nude. It's a little too sheer for me to wear on its own, but it's still really pretty and gives a nice sheen to the lips if worn by itself. But I love using it to top other lip colors because it really just seals everything in. Then to just finish off with some setting spray to make sure our look lasts throughout the day. And this is the completed look guys. So as you can tell, not a lot of color, not too complicated, just really a skin focused look, which I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite looks to do. So I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, bye.